debut. I mean, one of the greatest team debuts we've ever seen from a quarterback. And to do it against a defense that was in the top 10 last or previously. Last year, they, they struggled a little bit. But over the last few seasons, this has been one of the league's better defenses. And Stafford proved to be all that he was advertised to be. And the thing is that they didn't even use him as much as they could. He only threw it 26 times. So imagine there's going to be games, I'm sure, where he's throwing it in the 40s as far as attempts. And you can see big things coming. Now Sean McVay is able to use a little bit more of his playbook. They obviously had the two long passes. So, uh, so far, so good for the Rams. And uh, they're going to need to be this good because that division is no joke. Everybody won in that division. Right. Division's totally undefeated. It's the opposite of the NFC North, where the division yep. is totally defeated. Listen, Stafford was exceptional last night. There is no taking anything away from that. But no, it didn't answer the questions I have. The question about Matt Stafford is, how is he going to play in big moments? How is he going to play against good teams? Because despite Al and Chris doing a two-hour monologue last night about how absolutely nothing that ever happened in Detroit was Matt Stafford's fault, some of it was. And the 8-65 and 65 career record. 8 and 65 is what they put on the screen last night against teams with a winning record. That's a real thing. So, no, listen, I think we all picked the Rams to win that division. We think they're going to be good. I need to see them against good teams. The real story in this football game to me was the Chicago Bears' mismanagement of the quarterback situation is the type of things that should cost people jobs. Andy Dalton has no business starting in the NFL on a team with Justin Fields on it. The team was drawing dead the moment Dalton threw that end zone interception on the opening drive of the game. Justin Fields should start immediately. They play, I think, Cincinnati next week. He should be the starter and try to see if the Bears can get a good season together. That, to me, was a bigger story than Stafford, who obviously, Jenna, was exceptional last night. All right, sit back, Wilds. We head back to Foxborough. In the battle of former Bama quarterbacks yesterday, it was Tua who came out on top over Mac Jones, but just barely. Miami gets the close 17-16 win, but Mac looked pretty good, pretty comfortable. Finished with 281 yards in the touchdown, no interceptions. Most passing yards by a Pats QB in his first career start. Here was Mac on where he goes from here. I think we just we can get better. That's just how we have to look at it. Definitely wasn't good enough starting with me. Um, yeah, so we just we gotta watch the film and uh, we lost, so it's not good enough. He's so quiet, I can barely hear him. Wilds, should Pats fans be encouraged or discouraged after the week one loss? <laughs> encouraged, Jenna. Mac Jones, come here, buddy. I'm Robin Williams and you're Matt Damon. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. It's the penalty's fault. We had 85 yards in penalties. It's not your fault. We had 85 yards in penalties, the most in 23 games. We also turned the ball over, and you did not. In fact, it's not your fault. I'll get out. Come here, Matt Jones. Come here. You cry right here on my shoulder. In fact, when you look you at like, rookie you quarterbacks like who started week one, guess who was the best? Oh, checks notes. Da 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 da. Of all time, his name is Mac Jones. It was not his fault. That's he was the most time. accurate rookie of all time. Wow. Yes, that's Incredible. all time, my friend. Wow. Including, look, they got Rick Meyer. Just Solid a who's who. RG3 won rookie of the year. Yeah. Of and all time, he was the best rookie, though. obviously, yesterday as well. He was better than Trey Lance. He was better than Jordan Love. He was better than your guys. Than Actually, Trey he was Lance. better than your old friend Trey Lance with the for large a neck, Trevor Lawrence. So, Mac Jones, it was not your <laughs> fault. You did great. Incredible. All right, Wilds, I hate to – listen, I got to talk to Wilds for a second here because Wilds is sure, a smarter I'm football sure. fan than he, is, than he is leading on to in this segment. So I got a question for you. If Mac Jones do doesn't turn the ball over, if Mac Jones completed the highest percentage of passes for any rookie quarterback ever in his debut, why did the Patriots only score 16 points? The answer is, and you know the answer – because Matt Jones was playing with the training wheels on the whole game. It was dink and dunk and dink and dunk. And so why does that matter? Because in the red zone, that doesn't work, which is why they went 14 plays, 65 yards, field goal. 14 plays, 67 yard, field goal. 14 play, 57 yard, 
field goal. The one touchdown they scored came after a failed third down where they got bailed out by a very questionable roughing the passer call. So this idea, Pat, listen, the Pats are staring one and three in the face, staring it in the face with the schedule they have over the next three weeks. The idea that you should feel happy about losing a winnable game to Miami because the, when the offense scored 16 points, no, and you say he was better than Trevor Lawrence. I disagree. They let Trevor Lawrence go try to do things, and he threw three touchdowns, threw three picks. He's going to make mistakes. That's how you grow a quarterback. The Pats don't have enough talent wilds to be able to just win games with the dinking and dunking that they had Mac Jones do. That's why you lose to Miami when Miami didn't play that well. Okay. It was just week one. We're going to slowly grow. Well, you know, he's not necessarily, we're on a, still on a Dak Prescott, Big Ben trajectory. I was encouraged. Not happy, Broussard, but encouraged. Yeah, Nick, you're going overboard. All right. Uh, your boy Trevor Lawrence with the big neck. They played the Houston Texans. <laughs> Okay, Matt yeah. Jones, the reason they only had 16 days. points is because they played at Miami, which darn near made the playoffs last year and had the sixth best team in the league as far as opponents' points allowed. So that defense is stout, and that's what gave New England some trouble. Look, Matt, you're right. They, they didn't air it out with Matt Jones, but I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that game yeah. management because I, I'm old enough to remember to use a certain oh, person's phrase, to remember when Tom Brady was game managing and they were able to win was, Super Bowls yeah. in New England when he was a youngster. Was a so I'm just saying, right look, Mac was fine. I, 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 the only problem I have with what Wild said is when he showed that graphic, it didn't really inspire yeah. confidence when I saw Rick the other Meyer two names on it, RG3 and Rick Meyer. Yeah. Uh, other than that, I'm with Those you, Wild. This one hurts your case. Those are the best. You should have just had yeah, Mac. Yeah. Best just of all time. Period. Yeah. All right, let's go, oh, Buffalo. This is fun. Head up to Buffalo. This is the this same was. Buffalo a lot of folks have going all the way this year. Not a great start. Falling to Pittsburgh, that Steelers defense able to contain Josh Allen, contain that Bills offense. Big strip sack from TJ Watt coming off a big payday. Nick, was yesterday more about the Steelers' impressive performance or Josh Allen and the way the Bills struggled? Listen, I'd love to make it about the Steelers because Mike Tomlin, as Broussard has said, remains one of the most underrated coaches, not just in the NFL, yes. but across all professional sports. And that Steelers defense was excellent. But when you're nearly a touchdown favorite at home, coming off the best year your franchise has had in nearly 30 years, and you get out, you're up 10 nothing at the half, and then get 23 to 6 in the second half by a 40, nearly 40 year old quarterback who can't throw the ball more than five yards. That's about what you didn't do. And Broussard, I know everyone always says Josh Allen has a cannon for an arm. Last night it looked like one of those t shirt cannons firing into the crowd. Whoa, my God, look at how far it is, but nobody can catch it. Josh Allen was awful. He threw the ball 51 times for a measly 270 yards. He fumbled the ball twice. They lost one of them. And you can't become the highest paid player, second highest paid player in the history of the league. And in your first game against a team where you're a touchdown favorite that that was that people have uh, projected missed the playoffs this year, blow a 10-point halftime lead and do nothing second half. With great power comes great responsibility. Josh Allen now is the great payday. Did not live up to the responsibility yesterday for, you know, the trendy Super Bowl pick, Buffalo Bills. All right, look, Josh was not good. There's no doubt about it. But America, let me, let me show you how to decipher what Nick Wright is saying. Anyone who is even perceived to be a threat or even in the neighborhood of Pat Mahomes, Nick is going no. to destroy. So Nick just went oh, overboard really? I defended in how Aaron bad Rogers Josh quite a bit Allen was. That, that, that Pittsburgh team, well, Aaron Rodgers is no threat. He's the, he's the previous generation. Oh, I mean, that he just Pittsburgh won the MVP. team, okay, sure. this is what this was about. And you, I'm glad you brought up Mike Tomlin, Nick. Tomlin, this dude is a fantastic coach. Their special teams, we saw them block the punt. That was huge. The defense was tremendous. He handled the T.J. Watt situation perfectly, right? Because T.J. Watt comes in yesterday and didn't miss a beat. 
He had, what, two sacks right. and was hitting Allen all That's night, yeah. forced a fumble. Right. So, yeah, this was about the Steelers going to be better than we think. And we talked about this, Nick, last week. If Baltimore falters because of the injuries, don't be surprised if uh, this black and gold might be in that playoff race. Look. Listen, they're gonna they're gonna have to win a lot of games like this based on defense and special teams because I don't know about their offense. But I just listen, Bills fans, I know you're mad at me, but this is the this is now the cul-de-sac on which you live of alleged contenders. And if you're at home as a favorite, as an alleged contender, and you have that type of second half, there's gonna be significant criticism, yep. and it's deserved for your alleged superstar quarterback. That's where you are now. Uh, fun fact, I grew up on a cul-de-sac. Hey, we're back to oh. Jameis Winston. <laughs> he was simply <laughs> sensational right. yesterday versus the Packers. How shocking was his five-touchdown day? We break that down next. First things first on a Mon Monday morning.